we will review three different DNA test results from different DNA test companies. Around 2017, I had acquired an autosomal DNA test. They evaluate my nuclear DNA and determine which genes belong to particular countries and ethnic groups. In this case, the company Ancestry DNA. Before any DNA tests made, I could already predict which was my ancestry. So most of my results really don't surprise me as I already had done research about my family's background. My real curiosity has to be with my Taino ancestry. I had made a prediction that my Taino result couldn't be less than 15% nor higher than 20%. My first Taino result came in saying that my indigenous ethnicity estimate was 17, but that it could have a range of 24%. The next update presented Taino at 16%. The update after that had me at 18% Taino. However, the most recent update presented my Taino ancestry at 21%. These were the results and updates from the company Ancestry DNA. I was not surprised at my Taino ethnicity results or the updates, mostly because I could see it within my physical characteristics. I guess solely confirming that the Taino ancestry was there was enough for me mostly for entertainment value, other than my passion for my true Boricua heritage, a genetic value that most Puerto Ricans account with. After these different updates and results, I decided to submit my DNA to other companies that permit DNA uploads. To mention some of these companies, some that pertain to this video are GetMatch, MyHeritageDNA, and GenomeLink. We will get to GetMatch shortly. My heritage and genome link are similar to Ancestry DNA, more or less. As of updates of Ancestry DNA, I'm 21% indigenous with a range up to 25%. As of my heritage DNA, I'm 22% Native American. And genome link ranges my Native American ancestry at almost 27%. So what is actually happening here and what is genome link identifying that the others deem as African ethnicity results? Thus in previous tests may I have a higher levels of African heritage when these lineages or admixtures are being identified as Native American ethnicities? Even though the origin of some of these particular ethnicities may be African in origin. If you have seen my previous videos, particularly the one called Did the Taino Arawak have strong Papua New Guinean ancestry? Link in the description down below. Then you know what exactly we are talking about. Therefore, we are talking about Papua New Guinean ancestry that most South Native Americans and Native Caribbeans account with. Tribes in the Amazon have been sampled to some with up to 30% of their ancestry to be Papuan New Guinean derived. Here in GetMatch, as we said we would see further into this video, we could see how my own upload of the raw data to the site appears to get not higher than 4% of Papuan New Guinean ancestry maximum with some admixture tools. For my level of Native American ancestry, even just 4% Papuan derived is huge. This would mean that my cast of Arawak ancestors carried a good portion of their ancestry from Papuan-like peoples. By that claim, I believe that through my research, I can say that even through our very own Taino of Boriken, different parts of the island carrying different levels of this Papuan New Guinean ancestry, or New Guinean-like ancestry, even amongst our very own peoples. Papuan ancestry may be expressed uneven as of my research, I may confirm that the Papuan presence within Caribbean DNA, especially Puerto Rican Taino, that not only by nuclear DNA and even trade and the linguistics, but we are also seeing their Y chromosome, haplotype C among Puerto Rican Taino. While the haplotype of Taino men of the Dominican Republic and Cuba is predominantly male inherited haplotype Q, I would also confirm that by observation, Papua-like ancestry is very low or uncommon among communities known to be Afro-Caribbean, meaning that DNA test results of different peoples of the Caribbean descendants, almost entirely of the slave trade, may not show the same levels of Papuan ancestry as two individuals that are known to be mixed with Taino to a high level like many Puerto Ricans. 
where we can still find very good traces of this ancestry. What may explain the difference between these companies is how their tools may read the Papuan ancestry. For this ancestry that corresponds to the Arawak peoples of South America and the Caribbean may be included in the ethnicity results of peoples straight from the continent of Africa, when it's indigenous ancestry of the Americas. But it's not only this factor that plays onto different levels of results and updates. Precise companies such as GetMatch have suggested I can be as much as 39% of Eurasian ethnicities. That would be including how much ancient North Eurasian people are getting whether from the Yamnaya source or the Native American source. Peoples of the Americas like Puerto Ricans should be getting ancient North Eurasian DNA from these two sources, increasing the probability of Eurasian-like or Mongoloid phenotypes among these American countries and many of these peoples of their cultures. I still don't account with all the features of Genome Link, a company that may place me almost as high as 30% indigenous Americas, particularly from my country of Puerto Rico. This company says I'm only about 6 or 7% sub-Saharan African, so have all this time sub-Saharan African type DNA been misread and some of that DNA was always a part of the South Native American ancestry? Leave your opinion in the comments and I'll see you on the next video.